The start of the next custom mail-in tournament is creeping ever closer. Check out the Races and Fun Facebook page to learn how to enter. Time is running out and you do not want to wait. For now, welcome to day number four of the Races and Fun Widowmaker Tournament. This tournament has been absolutely bonkers so far and I'm sure it'll continue to do so. Here's the first group for today. We have the, the Lancer Revolution, the 65 Mustang, the Subaru Impreza, and the 69 Chevelle. I am loving the patterns on some of these vehicles right now. I am a sucker for flames, and two of these vehicles at least seem to have them. Possibly three. At the beginning of this race though, it is the Chevelle, I hope I'm saying that right, is out in front. But all three racers are directly behind him, in fact here comes the Mustang passing him and trying to block him as he spins around to face forward. We have a bit of a traffic jam around that turn, and so far the Mustang takes full advantage of that and goes out in front with a decent gap between him and second place. They go around that turn, here comes the big hump. And they do go airborne for just a split second, but they end up just spinning around, and here comes the Chevelle taking the win at the last moment. That Widowmaker Hill, whatever you want to call it, the Game Changer, whatever nickname you might give it, that one part of the track can make all the difference in some of these races, and we've certainly seen that happen quite a few times. It definitely shook the Mustang up just enough for the Chevelle to pass them. And if I am pronouncing that wrong, please let me know. And they finish with a 19.96. That's almost in the 22nd mark. That's okay for now, but that could be dangerous later on in this tournament should they progress. The fastest time we've had so far currently is held by the Batmobile from the previous video, finishing in the 15 second range, which so far no one else has been able to do, and the Batmobile hasn't even been able to replicate it more than once. And in this second race, the Mustang is now out in front and there's a lot less of a traffic jam with him and the other three racers, but the other three are relatively close together. The Chevelle is starting to pull away from the other two, but all that could change. The Mustang has a decent sized lead, so even if he wobbles a little bit, he will have enough time, hopefully, to correct himself. But he did stay on his feet, and he managed to get the win that time. Meanwhile, the Subaru Impreza does finish in second, and the Chevelle gets stuck just short. And we actually have two non-finishers, and one of them is upside down. You're gonna see a lot of that if you're just tuning in for the first time in this tournament. We've already had quite a few racers flip over and stay that way. Some of them are able to flip over and then correct themselves, get back on their wheels and keep going. But not everyone is so lucky. You see, sometimes it looks like they'll land on their feet again, but the way they land after they bounce off of the hill is when they start getting loose. So we only had two finishers that time. Now the Mustang has the best advantage because he's finished both times and no worse than second. The Lancer Revolution ended up on his back the last race. Let's see if he can keep from doing that this time. As we get into the third race and that first turn, the Mustang is once again out in front and he's trying to pull away, but the Lancer Revolution is not having it. Wait, is it the Revolution or the Evolution? I'll have to double check that later. But for now, the Lancer is actually losing ground on the Mustang, and the Mustang is pulling away. They go around that last turn. They go up the hill. Can they stay on their feet? Yes, they can. And they go down the hill, staying relatively straight and finishing in first yet again. At this point, it is pretty much guaranteed that they will move on, because no one else before this race had any more than five points. But it looks like we have another non-finisher. Oh, and it's the Lancer not only ending up upside down again, but off the track. Let's see if this replay will show how that happened. They seem to be doing well. They're in second, at least up until now. But I guess they had more than enough momentum going sideways that they actually went over the side. Or did somebody push them off? We've seen that happen before. In fact, I think it was in the last video. From the looks of the replay, it seems that the Lancer was going off the walls as they started to flip over, and because of that, a lot of that momentum shifted sideways, 
causing them to go off the track on their own. It's not looking good for the Lancer. In terms of who will move on, the best odds currently reside with the Mustang and the Chevelle. That being said, the Chevelle does have eight, but the Subaru Impreza has six, so he is right behind him in points. He just needs to catch up to him. So far, it looked like they were unable to do so, but now we have another traffic jam, even going around that turn, and everyone is going much slower than usual. And now it is the Lancer who is out in front. The question is, can they hold on to it? Some racers are able to take full advantage of opportunities like this. Let's see if the Lancer can do the same thing. They're currently staying out in front. The others are catching up close. In fact, they're right on top of him, and the Chevelle passes him. The Mustang was unable to do so, but they're in a much better position to move on anyways. And the Impreza, who had an opportunity to take the second position to move on to the finals away, was unsuccessful. As we saw with the Lancer, it is dangerous going over that hill, but it could be even more dangerous if you're colliding with someone else as you do so. An absolutely crazy jump, but thankfully they all still managed to finish. That has been difficult to do even when you don't bump into someone, and the Chevelle is moving on alongside the Mustang. Now in the second group, who will be in the finals? It could be the Ferrari 458, the Cadillac Escalade, the Formulator, and the Split Decision. That's an interesting name. But speaking of which, the Split Decision is currently holding on to a lead as they go around that first turn. The other three are staying relatively close together, but that gap is not that big. I could definitely see someone pulling up behind him out of nowhere. In fact, that looks like it might happen with the Cadillac, who's trying to catch him. Right now, the split decision is out in front. He's trying to block the Cadillac Escalade from passing him. So far, is successful, going side to side at the same time they are. They go over that hill, they both stay on their feet, but the split decision doesn't land straight, goes sideways, and ends up not even finishing. It looked like they might have been able to get a last moment nudge, but it was not enough. They were in first for most of that race, but as you can see, this one part of the track can change absolutely everything for you. Long story short, you do not want to get too cocky. He started out okay, but then the Cadillac passed him and then he got spun around even further, causing him to lose so much speed he didn't finish. But the Cadillac did alongside the Formulator. Or is it Formulator or Formulate? I, I think there might have been a typo in there, but I'm thinking it's Formulator. Even if it's not what it's called, that definitely sounds cooler, at least to me. But here we go into the second race, and now it is the Cadillac who is out in front with the other three trying to catch up to them. Let's see how they do when they're out in front. Will they be able to withstand the pressure or no? It looks like the Formulator is catching up, bumps into him, tries to pass him, and now we have three people fighting for first place, one right after another, forming a train of sorts as they go around the turn. Here they go up the hill. What changes will this make? The only real change that seems to happen is that the Ferrari flipped upside down and got stuck. But the split decision did manage to push them forward to the point where they could finish. And the split second, or split decision rather. Sorry, I'm just so excited. The split decision managed to have enough momentum that they still finished, even if it wasn't last. But any points at all is certainly better than none. Let's see how this will affect the standings. It looks like the Cadillac Escalade has two consecutive wins so far. If they can get another one, they will automatically move on. At least to today's finals, not necessarily to the grand finals. They still have another set of races to do if they move on. Will they be able to stay in front after that first turn? Yes, they will. But now the Ferrari and the Formulator are right behind them. And now the split decision, who started off really strong, doesn't seem to be showing up anywhere. Did they get stuck somewhere up the track? We'll have to check them out in a second. But now it is the Ferrari who's out in front. The Cadillac is trying to be the first undefeated racer, and the Ferrari flies off the track. 
the Ferrari who had the perfect opportunity to dethrone the Cadillac was unable to do so as they flew off the track just like the Lancer did. And somehow the split decision is still going. I'm not sure what happened to cause them to be this far behind. But they still managed to finish in third after all that. They must have been... The Ferrari must have been bouncing off the walls as they went airborne. Which is very dangerous, very deadly even, I would say. Let's take a look at that again. They do have the lead, a decent sized lead. But they just flew clear over the side. And because of that, the Cadillac once again will finish in first and they will remain undefeated for now. It looked like their hopes of being the first undefeated racer was dashed. But they are holding on to it for now. Talk about a lucky break. 17.75, still not the fastest time, but definitely one of the luckier finishes, to say the least. And the split decision definitely took advantage of that and still managed to finish in third after all that delay. Not sure what caused it, but it definitely helps them. But the Cadillac Escalade is already moving on to the finals. So far, they just need one more race to get a sweep in this group and keep their hope alive of being the first undefeated racer in this tournament. They are starting in the back though. Let's see if that affects anything. They do manage to sneak into third. They're looking for a way to pass the Ferrari. And they managed to do it around that turn. And now they just have split decision in front of them. But the split decision is trying to navigate around them so far. The Cadillac Escalade is able to pass everybody. And now all four are lined up in a straight line. And now the split decision is taking the lead back. Will the Cadillac be able to catch him again? It doesn't look like he will. The split decision does get the win, and the Cadillac will not be our first undefeated racer in this tournament. In fact, four videos in, and we still haven't gotten one. The split decision definitely seems to be a bit of a random racer, to say the least, because sometimes they do well like this, but then other times they somehow fall so far behind that the camera doesn't even see them until the very end. But the Cadillac Escalade and the Formulator will be moving on for the finals, which start now. They will be joining the Chevelle and the Mustang. No one is undefeated. Not one of these racers has the fastest time so far. But again, all you need to do right now is move on in order to keep your hope alive of winning the overall championship. Right now, the 65 Mustang has the lead, and the Cadillac and the Formulator are trying to catch up to them. The Chevelle is trying to do the same, although they're a little bit further behind. But now the Mustang spins around after bouncing off the walls a little bit, and the Cadillac transfers all their momentum to them. And now the Mustang going backwards, but they do have a decent sized lead. And now the Mustang goes over that hill, does not spin around, they stay straight, even though they're backwards, and gets a relatively clean finish. Formulator in second, Cadillac in third, and the Chevelle in fourth. Let's double check again. Did anybody go airborne on this particular race? The Mustang did just a little bit. Formulator and the Cadillac stayed relatively close to the ground. And the Chevelle, their front end came up a little bit, but they quickly came back down. So now the Mustang and the Formulator. Formulate? Formulator? I'm not entirely sure. It's kind of flip-flopping back and forth. But I'm sure we'll get a definitive name in later videos if this one moves on. And so far, they're in a better position to do so. Not the greatest, but so far you only need to be in the top two in order to move on. So you don't even have to finish in first. Right now, the Mustang is in first, and they do have a lead. But as I say that, the Chevelle is fighting for first place. They currently get it. And they are able to go a little bit faster, widening that gap just a little bit. Now they just gotta stay straight and stay on the track. And they do spin around. Will they have enough speed to finish in first? Yes, they will. They finish in first and the Mustang in second. The Chevelle, who finished in fourth, just changed things up quite a bit. They definitely boosted their odds with that one. 
and the Cadillac finished in third, and it looks like we have a non-racer back there. We're just waiting for somebody to focus on it. Here we go. And we have another racer who ended up just short of the finish line, upside down. That was a good clean jump. The landing wasn't as smooth, but the definitely, yeah, excuse me, the airtime definitely looked a lot smoother than some of these jumps we've seen before. Just the fact that they stayed on the track itself is quite an improvement for some of the other racers, or at least compared to them. But let's see how that shakes things up in points. Now the formulator is actually in last with only three points because they didn't even finish at all. That is definitely a hard blow to them. The Chevelle now has six points. They're actually close behind the Mustang with that finish. So now the Chevelle is in second of points. And now they seem to have the lead. And they have a decent sized one at that. For the most part, these racers have been relatively close together. Not so this time. The Chevelle is not happy that they finished in last in that first race. And now they're making up for it in spades. They go into the air once again. Clean air time. Not the smoothest of landings as they did bounce a little bit. But they did stay straight. And they finished in first yet again. And here comes the Mustang in second again. The Formulator did finish in third that time. Definitely better than before, but it looks like it will not be enough as the Chevelle finished in first again. We only have one more race in this video right now, and it looks like the two most likely to move on are the Ford Mustang and the Chevelle. Let's take a look at this finish yet again. Chevelle way out in front, staying straight almost the entire time. In a race like this with an obstacle like that hill back there, that is not always common. Certainly not as common as people might think. They did finish with a 16.34. That is definitely really good. They may not be the most consistent, but that's definitely one of the faster times we've seen. Again, the fastest time is still currently held by the Batmobile. Here we go, the final race for today. And it looks like the Chevelle is out in front yet again. I'm not sure what caused them to be in last in that first race of this group, but they are definitely making up for it. The question is, can they hold on to it? Those two first place finishes almost cemented their spot in the finals, or the grand finals, I should say. They go around that turn. Here they go, up against that hill. They go airborne yet again, but this time they do flip over, and the Mustang passes them. Will, the, will anybody bump the Chevelle forward to help them finish? No, they all go clean past him. I'm not sure if that's going to allow the Chevelle to move on or not. I figured if the Chevelle at least finished at all, that would greatly increase their odds, but they didn't finish. Let's take a look at that airtime again. They did seem relatively set, but it looked like the back wheel actually hit the edge of the ramp going down, causing them to end up on their backs. Meanwhile, these other racers, they saw that. And they managed to pass him. Let's see who's moving on. I believe the Mustang is. I'm not sure if the Chevelle will. It's a shame because it looked like the Chevelle might have been on track for the fastest time we've seen so far. The Chevelle is still moving on alongside the Mustang. And with that, the first half of our roster for this tournament in the Grand Finals is set. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time.